plan tonight is I want to go back to working for top dominance, getting up, because I know we started to like bring submissions a little bit back into the gym. And all of a sudden, everyone started just going fucking Hail Mary on everything. So <laughs> I'm trying to grab shit from the weirdest places, um, which, okay, yeah, good. It's almost like you're just, you're just teasing it. You're just edging it a little bit. Um, <laughs> so I want to go back to like focusing on getting dominant positions, holding people down, drowning them, um, and that kind of stuff. Uh, so what I want to work on to begin with, just see where you are at, is um, getting back up from a turtled position, uh, seeing that we remember from last time. Um, person on top, give them good resistance, give them a bit of a beating to see what they, they know. Uh, I said, this is just to, to more uh, establish where we're at, what we need to work on. Um, and then we'll, we'll establish some details to assist with that. So, but also like I say with, with half this, if you were, uh, when you see the, the way to get up, then you can shut it down as well. So one person turtle, uh, get up, get away, get out, whatever you need to do. Person uh, on top, slow them the fuck down, see what happens. Make sense? Off you go. Grab a human or something that resembles one. When you're in turtle, I said there's, there's various things that have come up over time where turtle has been involved. Depending on rule sets and depending on the amount of action. And, and um, I remember when Pre first came down, he said, like, unless you're holding me down, just get up, which works when you're playing normal jujitsu and no one expects you to stand. Um, but then as soon as you start dealing with people who stand, then you, know, you learn to hold people down more effectively. Um, so we looked at, you know, the old kind of covering the neck and why that exists is because you don't want people to car choke you, but it makes no sense in any other walk of life. Then you've got more pre style turtle where you're covering the hips so no one can get their ways into these spaces. But again, like if, if your posture is broken, they're going to be putting you down. You've got referee, which seems quite open, um, but your neck feels maybe a bit exposed and you're... you're hook space feels a bit exposed, but if you're just going to explode onto your feet, then that's fine. Um, so I've put this on the floor. Just see if it helps. Um, is that uh, when I have someone either directly in front of me or directly behind me, that's the biggest problem, is that they're going to be putting most of their weight onto my spine at this point, either on top of my head or on my hips. I don't want anyone in those places. That's when you're going to be very defensive with your hands, like either defending your neck if they're up front, or defending your hips and covering the gaps if they're behind you. Maybe more. <laughs> uh, if they're in the corners, yeah, problematic, but this is where more fighting can happen. Um, is that if they're ever so slightly out to the front of the side, I can definitely wrestle them over. Um, that's why if you're gonna do a turn around someone, like if, if Steve was in Turtle, for example, um, I'd want to make sure if I'm going around this angle here, I'm covering his arm to make sure that he can't attack me. Um, but again, if he's doing kind of regular human turtle, uh, I can hang out here quite happily. Um, does that make sense? So is that kind of angle there I need to be quite worried about? That's definitely a fighting angle. Um, thank you. So the angle that I'm really happy about is this one. If they're at the side of me, I can definitely start to fight back more effectively because um, they're not necessarily sitting on my hips as much or on my, on my spine. Um, I feel like this is the point where I can come up to like an active turtle and start to wrestle them if they're at the side of me. The only thing that then changes is who is sitting behind the other person's hips. So you can feel that happen like if, if uh, Steve's in turtle. Uh, we're both this angle. Whoever sits slightly back definitely is the person who's going to win. So as I'm getting up, like if he's attacking me here, if I'm playing turtle, if I can just get myself behind his hips here, I've definitely won. And so that's all I'm looking for is trying to put him onto that side angle, that green there, because that feels like I'm going to be able to fight him back at this point. If he's behind me, I don't want him on me. If he's in front of me, I don't want him on me. But if, as we start to go around to the sides, that means I can start fighting him back. So it then dictates how I'm going to stand up, but also what I do if I'm attacking people. Like if I sit behind someone's hips here and put weight on the hips, I know he can't stand up easily because 
I've got weight on his legs. And I'm just, if he doesn't break my grip, I'm just going to dick him into the ground every time he gets up. Same as if I'm at the front of him, I can put weight onto his neck, pull his head out and stop him from standing. It's only when you have these angles here. Like right now, this is fucking dog shit. In normal jiu-jitsu, this would be fine because he's just thinking about not letting me in these gaps. But if he's going to like fight me back in any way and he can just get his leg behind mine, fuck. <laughs> like, that's it, it's over. Um, does that make sense? So when you're doing your stand up here, that's what you're trying to think about of adjusting yourself. Try and find yourself out at those angles and see if you can then just sit your leg behind theirs. You just go wrestle them out of it. Does that make sense? So try the same drill again, getting up from turtle, but just being aware, like, okay, if they're at the front or the back, you're going to have to hand fight and beware those important spaces on your spine, hips and neck. If they're in the corners, like, it's going to be a bit of a fight, but you can definitely start to fight them back. At the sides, just get behind their leg, you're going to win. You can, break, you can wrestle up. Or the third option, which we'll look at in the next break. Does that make sense? So same again, try that out. Uh, person on top, give a little bit less resistance so they can feel those different angles, but just put up resistance over time. Make sense? Feel it, off you go. Just wanna add one more detail then, is this I, um, is open door policy. Uh, so, it's quite simple. Um, go, yeah, so if you sit here. So if I go for an ankle lock, this is courtesy of Mr. Danaher, completely different, unrelated thing, but that's what makes sense, is, if I go for like any sort of ashy kind of grip on him, the most logical way for him to escape is if he wants to get his hip out, just go for the open door. Like just pop through that gap. If he gets hit for that gap, he's out. So but if I close the gap and connect my heel to my foot, he has to generate a gap to get his hip out of. Seems quite obvious. Um, and so the most logical, let's say, he has to make a hole to get out of it. If I connect up that and he tries to, he tries to get his hip out, He's got to get a step out of that. So he's got to separate my knee and my foot. Now there's a hole for him to get out of. And it's the exact same if you're trying to get up, is if you want to get away from someone or move into space, if they've connected themselves up with a grip, that's a problem. But if you can hand fight, if Steve's um, attacking at the side of me again, or he's got a back grip or something like that, it's going to be very hard for me to get out. But he can't now do anything. Like, he can't go for my neck or anything because his hands are here. <laughs> can't go for a seat battle or shit. So if he wants to open his grip and actually do something, he gives me a hole and that's my way out. Like he lets, again, same thing as the leg, like that's the place I'm gonna go into. I'm not gonna back up into him, that's his arm is. But I can spin, I'm gonna come out that way. So just be aware, like if, if you are in those kind of horrible places, especially if they're body locking you and holding you down and ragging you around a bit, okay, fine, that's shit. But they're gonna have to let go at some point to attack you and progress to your neck. This isn't wrestling, so the rules aren't the same. Uh, they want to submit you or some shit like that. I mean, they've got to open their grips at some point. If you have an awareness of that open hole project, like, create it, keep it open, and just fucking leave. Um, so be aware, again, like of that idea that you want them at the sides because you've got more of a chance of being able to sit them into a corner and put them down. But again, like if, you, if they've got a grip on you, you're not going to find it easy, especially if they've got a tight grip. Like, I'll borrow you a loop for this. Like, I mean, that's just having a regular gable. But if I, <laughs> sorry, um, if I uh, pull my gable out towards his hip here and sit my uh, elbow down in towards his hip flexor, like, can you do anything? Can you get up? Yeah, it's fucking shit. All I'm doing is pin pinching my hip. So this one's coming. Uh, 90 degrees across his pelvis and this one's sitting into his hip here and I've got my gable and I pinch my elbow down and it puts a lot of pressure through his hip here which makes it very fucking difficult to stand so I'm coming around biting down to his hip so that, now for him to break that grip my hands are all hidden and there's a lot of pressure through his hip so if he wants to do anything he's, he's kind of fucking stuck he ain't going to get up he ain't going to roll to guard he ain't going to do anything but I can't do anything either like, I've got to let go of this to be able to progress and at that point, if he's aware of the hand fighting and keeping the open door, as soon as I try and do anything, if he grabs hold of my hand, yeah, he can just fucking leave. Okay? So add that kind of level of realism into it where you're doing a bit of hand fighting. And just be aware, as soon as you create that hand fight, there's space for you to move into. Okay? 
They've given you an option, there's the door, make that door bigger, move up into space. It's a whole idea of that 3D control again. Make sense? So just be aware when they're sitting behind you and they're, they're dicking on each other like these two were, like, don't fight someone who's got a, a tight gable grip. There's no point, especially if they're fucking strong. Like, as soon as it breaks, open it, keep it to the side, leave through the door, okay? If you need to leave, that's the third option. Otherwise, if, if they're moving around, just put them on a 90 degree angle and just mess with them. Carry on, add those ideas into it. <laughs> Other important things? Go right now. Um, so, control, I say controlling the hips, controlling the either end of the spine is obviously quite important. Like, as much as, you know, if I, say if I'm around the front of him, if I haven't got a good head control, if I'm not breaking his posture, if I'm not really fucking with his posture, he can just high hip and start to like wrestle me back. Um, that's why if I'm, you know, if, if I'm here with a grip on neck, if he just stands up, this is a problem. Like, I'm gonna have to try and wrestle him the fuck down. But if I control his chin, like we were talking about the other day, like, I can make his life really difficult when it comes to standing. Um, but also if I open up his neck, there's a chance I can jump into guillotines or, or whatever. Um, if I'm behind him, all I'm thinking about is weight on his hips. So saw that grip just, other options, sit on the back of his ankles or the back of his knee. So that's gonna make his life hard as well. Like if he wants to try and stand up right now and I'm standing on the back of his leg here. So my knee's in the middle. Also it kind of deals with leg locking scum. Is that, so just change the angle. Is that if I put my knee on the inside and my foot on the outside, I can then just lower myself onto his ankle or onto the back of his knee. And that's gonna make it hard for him to do like regard and stuff or stand because his fucking knees pinned to the floor. Then I can rotate my hand outwards basically give him a reach around in the thigh and then sit on his hips a little bit. So if I'm forward, there's not much pressure, but as I lean backwards across his hip, that puts a lot of pressure into his, uh, across his thigh. So if he tries to stand now. Yeah, he has to deal with all this shit. Um, so I, again, that's why I said that orange position is quite important. Like, you know, it's, it's not as good as sitting right behind him or right in front of him, but it's pretty decent. Um, does that make sense? Uh, so yeah, sitting, I'll do it on the other side. Yeah, knee on the inside, foot on the outside, hand sitting upright, pulling into his hip here. Do you think he can do much? He's gonna have to break that grip. But also if he breaks it, again, I'm still sitting on his ankle. So who gives a fuck? Like you ain't going anywhere. If I put my leg on the inside, that's when a leg locker's gonna come for you. Uh, yeah, so just be mindful of that. Um, other option, which if they start to open up a little bit, I'd kind of do this, I did this to Rob earlier, and he didn't like it as much, is I sit on their hips and just put my weight through here as well. So I'm using my shin across his hip flexor. This foot, I'm rotating it inwards, so there's pressure on his hips here, so I'm like pushing him forwards. I put pressure on the back of the neck. Now what are your options? I've got to fall to the hips, so I can't turn. Yeah, you can't turn, because I'm squeezing into his ass. That sounds, sounds wrong. wrong. Sorry, dude. Uh, squeezing like pressure, like turning my foot inwards here. So it's putting pressure into his, into his hip flexor. I'm sitting on his hip flexor on this side and I'm breaking down his posture with my arm. So again, I'm controlling his spine, uh, making it so he can't easily, uh, e a, a pull guard, he's really gonna collapse himself if he does, or stand up, because he's got no posture at the front or back. Does that make sense? So I might just be pushing his head into the ground at this point, um, lifting his ankle, all that good shit. Can you do much? No, I'm going to use all this part. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, again, why well, you don't want people around those kind of angles. If you're in a gi, you should do the fucking, I haven't done the pony ride in ages. I did it the other day and I got told off. By who? Hey. Said you're a horrible person. Oh, is that what you were doing? Oh, mate, this could be sick. I did it to Adam and John. So, if they've got a gi on, uh, a useful control to have as well, just in case like you, they are someone who tries to stand up and do shit, is go behind the name tag in here, and again, get hold of the gi, big hand of it, then rotate your elbow in, and join your elbows together. And now it doesn't matter what the fuck he does, you can just ride, ride him around the room. Is that if he tries to like, even stand up or anything like that, you can pull him back down again, and just have a wait of a time. Uh, if you want, if he's really being good with closing up the gaps for putting hooks in, so I go back to the turtle. 
Right, I can just open them up, put hooks in. If it fails, that's fine, because I'm still riding them around. It's quite difficult to get out of this grip once I've got onto his shoulders. Um, so if you have got a gi on, or someone's wearing a gi, and you want to just like pony ride them for a bit, this grip here, elbows together, and then just do what the fuck you want to him. Even if you fall off, you can absolutely just pull yourself around and just have a wave of a time. <laughs> So add more controls into what you're doing. If you want to add big fucking crazy gi grip, be my guest, ride them around the room. Uh, if you are behind them, again, think about sitting on the ankles, that rotating arm, straight arm, reach around to the far thigh, puts a lot of pressure on the hip. If you just slide backwards across their hip, um, sit on the hips, break the head posture. The, the goal is, one, you know, I said this is like for benefit of improving your dominance on top. Um, if we improve this kind of knowledge about dealing with people when they're in turtle, like we're going to deal with people who just stay in turtle. That's not a problem. We can make them miserable by picking up their ankles. But people are also trying to get up or leg lock us. We want to both shut them down. So improve your dominance on top if you start to look at both angles of this. Um, anything else? Any questions? So just play with those uh, themes of control. Well, kind of, it gives you that idea that if you are going to get up, which you should be getting up, um, don't spend long in turtle. Because someone who's smart is going to move into one of those good positions now and put a lot of pressure on you. So if you're going to come up like out of kindergarten or something like that, like don't fucking chill. Like don't allow yourself to get turned because then this shit's going to happen unless you're going to keep the door open and escape. Otherwise, if you're getting up, make sure that as you, you square them into that, that green zone, and now you've got a chance of coming back or putting them up front again. Does that make sense? So keep that in mind. So I want to add, feel these different controls, understand why they're shit to be under, especially when your head's getting fucked up. Um, and then go from one of those like running man or Kindle guard kind of positions, standing up and making sure they don't, they don't get those controls over you. And that should take us till seven o'clock. Make sense? So feel around. The different controls, posture braking, hip control, ride around if you've got a gi on. Uh, then do it from a get up and realize you don't want to spend time in turtle. It's fucking hard. But use those ideas of creating the right angle, grip brakes, going into space. Off you go. 15 minutes of it. Thoughts, feelings, emotions? Uh, it's an awesome it's definitely an awesome <laughs> uh, Does it make sense? Not make sense? Was a, was it any help actually looking at it from that angle? Yeah. It's not. I say that like you know that little X on the floor. It, it's not perfect. Like I said, there's there's certain angles where to have like grips. It's it's definitely going to be difficult. Um, but it's definitely you don't want them in the red zone. That's when life gets really fucking hard. If they've got weight over your head or weight over your hips, life's going to be a, uh, a lot harder for you. Uh, but if you can force them out to the side, and you definitely if you've got the door open and you can get that that pommel in. Or an underhook or something like that, or even a, a, a whizzer or, or just some sort of control like that, you definitely have the best uh, chance of fighting back. Um, one last draw then, just because you know, we didn't start to a couple minutes late, is that's us trying to deal with um, us, <laughs> people who want to like control us and, and put us into the floor. So what I need you to do then is imagine you are a normal jiu-jitsu person and you're trying to get hooks in. Like, try and get a rear naked choke, try and get a submission, try and get body lock or uh, point scoring, get hooks in, flatten them out, anything you need to do, seat belts, all that good shit. Um, I say good shit. Do normal jiu-jitsu stuff and use this against it. Does that make sense? So if you haven't done normal jiu-jitsu stuff before, because... Who knows? <laughs> um, neck. So if he goes to my neck, if he gets a rear naked, then it's a win for him. If he gets hooks in and gets points, it's a win for him. So if he gets his feet in, I don't want that. If he gets a seat belt, so that's over shoulder, under armpit, I don't want that. If he gets a body lock, as in a body triangle. <sighs> okay, yeah, no, I'm a bit fat boy right now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but if he gets his legs around my stomach and closes them up, yeah. <laughs> um, 
If he gets any of those situations, then it's a win for him uh, if he can hold it for three seconds. So ignore normal wrestling practices like we've just been doing, normal kind of killing a, a girl. Like if they're, if you have, if you, if you apply it correctly, so be more focused on jujitsu attack instead of grappling attack. If you want to add some grappling attack in, that's fine. But look for point scoring jujitsu shit and see how this works against it. Um, the one thing I would say is if someone dedicates a hook, that first hook in to the gap, just pull the fucking knee. Not just slide them off the side. Like if Naki, you know, is attacking me and all that kind of shit and he gets that hook in, like, just pull the knee. Like they're going to fucking disappear off to the side of it. Or stand up and pull the knee. Because they're going to go flying off to the side. Um, so see how you feel. If they do get a hook in or if, if, even if he has a seatbelt, so if I've really fucked up and that he's got a seatbelt, like that's still going to be hard for him to hold on to the second his knee moves. Okay? So either get rid of it or make him overcommit on the hook and he'll go flying off to the side if you need to. But see what happens. I want to see how this works out for you if you're against normal jujitsu practices. And you've got to think we still do a good do Laurie. Yeah, yeah, just do good shit. Just do good shit. Either closing doors, up, down, creating postures, try and create the right angles, not letting someone behind you or in front of you, hand fighting, stripping grips, moving into spaces. All the stuff we've just been working on, all that correct stuff, apply it, get up and get away. Uh, against normal jujitsu practices. If someone you try and get a guillotine or a rear naked or hooks or something like that, see how it works for you. But person on top, you really have to put in some resistance because I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> Let's find out. Off you go.